Crawford Street. We got what you need. Come get what you want here today, today, today. We've been talking about him for the last couple of days. We've been talking about him because we're so excited about him. You know him. Y'all heard of him. I know you have because I have. And if I heard, then I know the word has gotten out. We got Mr. I need you. I need your glory. <laughs> we got the smooth like, voice <laughs> over here. We got the one and only. Amazingly talented. Gospel wonderness. I, that's a word. <laughs> no, it's not a bad right? it's, it's, Yeah, we got that. We got him in studio with us today here on the Amanda Sup Morning Show. Please, by all means, turn your volumes all the way up and your dials to 102.5 FM. We got Mr. Ernest Pew in the building. Hey, pew, hey, pew, hey, pew, hey. Pew, 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 I made blah, it now. Blah, blah, blah. I made it. I made it. We're so glad to have you here today. It's a pleasure. Thank you for joining us. Everyone, please, again, by all means, uh, we, we want you to pay attention to this interview today because uh, they've got some great things going on. And, and, and I've, 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 I've always wanted to have a conversation with uh, Mr. Ernest Pew. And we'll also introduce our other guests that we have in here as well. Um, you are a, a powerhouse, super oh. popular. I remember um, when that song came out, and it was like it was the best gospel song since sliced bread. Since, oh wow! You know, it was just the best. <laughs> and I, I mean, we just want to know from you, Ernest Pugh, yes. how in the heck did you get into gospel <laughs> music? How did you get started? Who pushed you? Uh, all of those good things. Tell everybody who the heck Ernest Pugh is. Well, wow! Now you you put you set the bar so high. Let's see if I can uh, <laughs> respond in a in a in a in a great way. Uh, I hail from Memphis, Tennessee. You know, it's the home of Southern um, barbecue. gospel. Mm -hmm. Barbecue. You got B.B. <laughs> King. You got Al Green. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know what I was going to really do, but I was a church kid. So uh, my parents, you know, all we knew was church. Mm -hmm. And so whereas I was influenced musically by all these people, by the age eight, my great grandma was, she anointed me. I didn't know what an anointing was. Mm -hmm. And she just said, you got the same uh, anointing that um, David had. As he refreshed Saul, you're going to go to the nations. I didn't know who David was or Saul. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All I know it's, you know, my Grandma great grandma is saying it. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, although I like blues and, and I, I loved entertaining, I didn't think it would ever be in gospel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so later, you know, as I put out demo tapes and things, Orlando Draper, who was the powerhouse Grammy Award winning, the late great Orlando Draper, started mentoring me at 12. Mm -hmm. And I sang on the first album by 13. Well, fast forward to 18, I ran away from all of that to join the military because I didn't want to be associated with church. I, I had watched Why my not? parents. That my parents were probably abused in church. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They what just, makes you say that? Well, they were you. Right running, 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 running to do so much for the church. Mm -hmm. But when we needed something, and mm -hmm. we were a family of 12, I had 10 sisters and, and it was two boys. So mm -hmm. we, we couldn't get that to be reciprocated. Mm -hmm. So we did all this running to build the church, build the church, and when we needed the church. To, to me, mm -hmm. as a child watching, the church was never there for us. Isn't it the story of a PK kid, though? Yes. I would have to say yes, if I'm honest. Yeah. Go ahead, Marcus. What was your MOS in the Army? 81 Lima. What I was, was that? I printed money. Oh, you a oh. uh, comptroller? Excuse no, finance, no. finance. A photo, photo lithographer, and wow. then later I was a drill sergeant, so I, I, oh, okay. I was training the troops eventually. But yeah, okay, I was twenty years later. I was seventy-one Lima. Oh, you were Lima. an admin. Mm -hmm. I was admin at first, and then I went to Fourteen Echo. Oh, now what's that? Uh, Patriot Miss Operator. Oh, God bless. You. Eight, mm -hmm. uh, Air defense. That, that uh, was you, fun. You saved my life. <laughs> <laughs> and and also I was uh my last three years of the army, I was a recruiter. Oh, okay, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very That's stressful job. Uh, horrible. <laughs> Worst job in the military. Right, right, right. <laughs> so you believe your parents? were church hurt they were I believe they were ex they were exempt now they both have, have uh, deceased since mm -hmm. then but uh, we had that story all the time sure. please come back please sure. come back but I went a different path but even though I left to go to the military God still you can run but you can't hide that's right he still utilized the military mm -hmm. I was in the army of the Lord but I also was in the US Army mm -hmm. and God just kept sending people bringing me back to the church mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so I just took a chance and made a demo tape around about the year 2004 and I got turned down by eight record labels. Mm. They were like, you can sing, mm -hmm. and you're in good shape, mm -hmm. you know, you look all right, you yeah. can dress, but you know, your gift is really not a national mm -hmm. type gift. So mm -hmm. eight churches, mm -hmm. new beginnings. Mm -hmm. And my mom spoke uh, something very profound that really changed the trajectory. She said, if they won't sign you, sign yourself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you got a great mm -hmm. credit score. That's the way. Go to the bank, go borrow the money, do what you But what I know you do have is a gift. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I signed myself. I got friends who contributed to me, and boom. A long story short, 
at least five of those labels mm -hmm. have worked with me since yeah. I started everything on my own. Mm -hmm. So I kind of had to chart my own path, mm -hmm. invest in my own self. And so now, you know, 12 albums later, several uh, number one billboard hit. I talk to these people all yeah, the time yeah. tell, tell them who rejected me. Tell them what, 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 what your accolades are. Tell them what you got. Uh, what you mean? Oh, this is a chance. Just song, you, song, just go ahead and put a song <laughs> on them right quick. What well, you mean? We, yeah, we, we, we were blessed to get an Emmy Award. We have four, uh, we have three number one uh, billboard uh, singles. And mm -hmm. then we have one uh, number one album. Um, we have several dub nominations mm -hmm. and, and probably 16, 18 stellar nominations. And, you know, we work probably mm -hmm. out of 52 weeks a year. We work probably 42 weeks. That's so year. good. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, this, uh, these are nuggets that you're dropping. It's not just for gospel artists, but this is just for, for anybody yeah. in entertainment. Absolutely. Period. Um, what are some experiences that you had where you could have given up, but you decided, you know what? Grandma said I was going to make it. Grandma <laughs> said I could sign myself. Give us an experience that happened to you in entertainment that you was like, man, you know what? This is it for me. I'm gone. Well, you know, when you put out a record and you got content mm -hmm. uh, and nobody, the phone is not ringing yeah. and you're not able to pay that the money back that mm -hmm. you spent, you can really start to, am I on the right path? And so... I just encouraged myself. I went to the Stellar Awards this one year. I had recorded the album, had everything done, mix master. And while sitting in the audience, the talent guy who puts together all the talent that gets on TV and sing, he said, I have an artist that didn't show up. Ernest, mm -hmm. do you have your track? And it's a it's an inside joke because I always have a musical track. Yes. I'm always sitting on ready. <laughs> and I said, I do have my track. He said, you're on in five minutes. No way! This was the Stellar Award <laughs> free show. I got up and I sang a song called Rain On Us, which was my first song. Which is an one amazing hit. song, by the way. Go ahead. And I'm sitting there like, am I really going on? He said, you're on in five minutes. I'm looking like, yeah, yeah. no band. All I sure. have was a track, my faith, my gift. I go on stage. And when I tell you, I put it to you like this. I didn't have a radio person. Yeah. That song got so much exposure when I came out with the record the mm -hmm. next year. It's like all the world free. I didn't have to pay for marketing, promotions, mm -hmm, anything. Mm -hmm. Because of that one moment, mm -hmm. the whole gospel industry, That's every right. radio program, mm -hmm. every radio music, they knew the record. When I said I was releasing the record, instantly. Yes. It just went, and it stayed at the number one position for like three months. This is so amazing. And everybody's looking at me like, what did you do? I said, I can't take the credit for it. Right, right, right. What I can say, or <laughs> what I'm going to see about the story is that you were available. I was That's available. That's one thing I do yes. understand from this. And then it seems like you, we've gone through a pandemic. We're going through a pandemic right now. But it Tell seems me like that. to me that you've been through <laughs> pandemics already. Yeah. Tell us when how When I you've released been able to that pivot. record in 2008, mm -hmm. we were going through an economic downturn. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to release a record called For He Is The Great I Am. Mm -hmm, and Keith mm -hmm. and everybody was like, no, we need to do rain on because we're in a dry season. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we need God to saturate the lives of people who are without a job, without That's a right. house. And so we were in a economic downturn mm -hmm, in 2008 mm -hmm, when mm -hmm. I released that song. So in a pandemic, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we released that, went to the top. In a pandemic in 2020, mm -hmm. we released a song called God Wants to Heal You that went to the number one slot. In a pandemic mm -hmm, now, mm -hmm. because I believe what you have to do is have your ear to the ground to really hear what God is saying right. in that season and in that moment. And it not only rec uh, resonates, but it's applicable mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. the current reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just what God just keeps doing over and over. When I think it's over, and mm -hmm. I'm thinking it's just at the end, and that's what God's waiting on for you to come to the end of yourself so He can take over. Come on, Ernest <laughs> you know, Your Speak agenda will today. only what go so wait? far. Okay, uh, how did the military affect your music career? Mm -hmm. um, and when did you get out of military? Good question. It um, it affected my. Uh, it really called up on my gift more than I thought it was. Mm -hmm. I was sitting in a, a chapel service after basic training. Yeah, and you know we're so oppressed and depressed and traumatized. PTSD. Where'd you go to basic? I can only imagine. Fort, Mc, uh, uh, Fort Belleville, Virginia for basic, but my AIT was in Fort McClellan. Yeah. And I'm sitting in a chapel service really just praying that they don't kill us because, you know, we're running <laughs> and, they, and I'm singing and the chaplain of that uh, particular service comes in and says, are you a singer? I said, oh, no. No, no, no. I'm just doing this for fun. He mm -hmm. said, this Sunday. And, you know, when they point to you and yeah. tell you, oh, this yeah. Sunday you're going to lead us in worship. So I think you had a day off. Yeah. <laughs> and every Sunday from the end my BDU uh, mm -hmm. And then it, it just, I could not get away from, it's like a, a irrevocable calling that you think you can get away from. So he called on me for that. And then I got the basic train, mm -hmm. uh, AIT. It was the same thing. I got the Fort Hood, my first duty oh, station. Oh, yeah. No, I've been there twice. Fort Hood? Yeah, I was in 4ID. You're going to live a long time. Uh, I was in 4ID and then I was in, uh, in, the, in, yeah, in the 88 unit. I was oh. at headquarters for ID. Oh yes, yeah. well, I was first cavalry division headquarters across the street from yep. the uh, from where you were. Yep, 
So we had some similar paths. Mm-hmm. You're going to live a lot. Third core, three core. Yeah, I did three core too. Yeah, I did third core. So too. you've had opportunity after opportunity after opportunity, and it looks like you've taken those opportunities and move forward with them in power. Yes. So how were you able to pivot during this pandemic in 2020 and still rise as an artist? I, I saw you moving around, still doing virtual <laughs> concerts, doing you know uh, physical concerts and things like that. But what in your mind helped you push through? Is Was it thinking about those experiences? Mm-hmm. Was it thinking about the future and after the pandemic? What did you do to pivot? I think uh, being at home and, and less distractions, mm-hmm. I was able to really reach inside of myself and say, well, what is it that you would like do you can't move around you can't travel so I began to just I pulled out an old list of, of goals mm. dreams mm-hmm, mm-hmm. aspirations and I said I've got a book inside of me mm-hmm. I got more music inside yes. of me I'm a cook so I like to cook it all oh yeah I'm a southern boy <laughs> come on now I would have brought you you know some uh, pig feet <laughs> but back. he didn't y'all you, but you're not into pig feet and chitlins and stuff like that so. I'm into whatever I'm into got okay you hear me <laughs> You got okay, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm challenge you on that. So that's what I did. I just, things that were inside me that I wanted to do. And I found that people were like, hey, we're in this pandemic with you. We can't go anywhere. I'll watch your show. Sure. So we uh, probably doubled our followings on the YouTube channel, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which uh, we were able to have more kingdom expansion, mm-hmm. more reach. Mm-hmm. Uh, New Year's Eve, what's crazy is we were in seven places on New Year's Eve. No way. Five virtual, two mm-hmm. in person. Mm-hmm. I've never in my whole 20-year career in the military been in seven places in one day. So <laughs> Ooh, what we thought, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> but it was just a matter of the power of social media right. and the virtual. We we now have, I think, when we when we left from cassettes and CDs and mm-hmm, went over mm-hmm. to digital downloads and streaming, right. we complained. Mm-hmm. But if you think about it, it was an old paradigm that we had to shift yeah, into. That's right. Now we're having to shift away from the old systems mm-hmm. and now we have to do the virtual. And it's really easier. You have more reach, mm-hmm. more expansion. Mm-hmm. And you can be more creative That's right. in the privacy of your own home. That's right. Without a mask. With, seven, huh? seven, without a mask, church. <laughs> seven spots in one day. Yeah. I'm, seven spots. That, that, no, that reminded me of when I was at Fort Hood and my unit was deploying to Iraq. Yeah. And they had me in seven spots in one day getting all this <laughs> I stuff. I bet done. you were. And then they told me I'm not deploying. Uh oh. Okay. I'm no, mad that you didn't deploy. No, I was mad. No, <laughs> I wanted to deploy because I needed the money. But yeah. at the same time, like if they're gonna keep me back to fix all the mail rooms and four and four infantry division, <laughs> but you got to stay home and stay safe. Right. Yeah. I went over that twice. Hey guys, mm. look, we got Mr. I need your glory in the building. We got uh, Mr. Ernest Pugh in here, and he's got a guest with us as well. Uh, When we come back from break, we're going to talk about March Gladness event that they've got coming up. You want to hear more about it, you want to stay in tune, make sure you've downloaded our app. If you're inside the 610 loop, if you're downtown, then by all means, put your dials to 102.5 of them right now. We are live. This is the Amanda Sapp Morning Show. Keep it locked right here. We will be right back. Out. I'm <laughs> here in living color. Okay. Yeah, we're still we're still we're still live on Facebook, by oh, the way. We? Yes. Okay, well y'all talk to Facebook. That's our camera right here. Let me go get y'all one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we got the boss man here. Look at <laughs> Dr. Piggins is gonna tell y'all all the secrets. Got how, three minutes, Amanda. Okay. How to be a comedian I, and a preacher <laughs> and run <that>. He's <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so yeah, like um when'd you get out? I got out of active duty in 1998, but I stayed oh, okay. for another eight years in the Texas National Guard. Gotcha, gotcha, so gotcha. So gotcha. 20 years. Yeah, so I did, um, I did, I came in in 2000. I was oh. in Korea. Yeah, I came in right before uh, Bush got elected. And then I went to Korea. 9-11 happened while I was in Korea. So? Uh, no, I was in uh, TDC. Okay. Uh, Area 1 the first time. And then I was at Fort Hood. I was at 4ID. Then I went to the reserves after I got my recording contract. Oh, um, yeah. I got a recording contract so while I was in. Too. Okay. Yeah, um, I had a uh, recording and production contract. Uh, Chris Lighty was my manager. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And um, so in 2000, yeah. So I went. I went to full. Uh, requirements of my record deal was that they pay for my college. Oh. So okay. I went to. I went to full sale. 
finished up. No, for for sale in Orlando. Oh, okay. So I finished up that degree, and then I had a military clause in my recording contract. So if I go back to active duty, the contract is void. Oh, wow. So I so once You're I got right. once I got my uh, once I got my degree, I went right back to active duty. Uh, went to Fort uh, was stationed at Fort Sam for about six months, then uh, reclassed uh, San Antonio. Yeah, and then reclassed to uh, Fort uh, reclassed to uh, Fort Echo. So I went to Fort Bliss for about a year. Oh my God! Yeah. So then I got. Then I got stationed in Korea again, but this time I was in Wagwan. And then after Wagwan, I went back to Fort Hood to be in another ADA uh, unit. And then six months later, I got selected for recruiting. How many years did you do? Eleven. Okay. Yeah. That's I got cool. out because they wanted me to do one more year of recruiting. Uh, and I was like, no, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, recruiting is very stressful. It's horrible. But that, horrible. that pension is real cute. Oh, um, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I still get percentage because of my injuries and stuff. Okay. But like, but most of my percentage goes to my, uh, go like I use my percentage to pay for my uh, rent and stuff. So, okay. yeah. Wow, I have to stay in touch with you. We okay, we're going to talk about these revivals that y'all got One minute. On. We got one minute, Amanda. Okay. Yeah. Um, when we come back. We're gonna wrap it up with your um your well you know what we'll end it with your music and book. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we'll do that. And I think they played your song at nine o'clock too. We already played we played it right now, and then we oh, got another oh, one. Oh, okay. We got when another we one. Back, that you can introduce what we just heard. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, thank we're you thank so much. Yeah, we're playing. Thank you so much right now. The intro what we just heard, and then that'll lean into how you created that. Of course, na during this time, it's such a time as this. Oh, yeah. And then we'll lead into your guest that you brought in studio, Absolutely. Mr. Uh, is it, how do you pronounce it? Piggott. It is Piggott? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Piggott Got 20 seconds. Your do good, feel good station. What's up, guys? We are back. We're back. I'm Amanda Seb. We got wink, wink, wink. Uh, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Come Duet on, man. coming up in 2021. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you want to do a project together? I'm scared. <laughs> but you're going to have to be on the cover. You're going to need you. You know what I'm saying? That'll help with sales. It will help you sell. <laughs> please don't, no, please don't give, no, no, no. Did she look a whole lot better? Is she easy to look at than me? Uh, <laughs> let's, do a, let's do a project, okay? All right, oh, guys, look, we got Ernest Pugh in the building, and he's been giving us, you actually been dropping nuggets. If people are paying attention, you are letting us know as an artist how you can move forward in spite of. So we appreciate the, this information that you're giving. Um, and it, I know that this is something that you learn over time. Yes. Right? Um, so you've been able to, to, to make things happen. You've been able to pr get opportunities from, you know, even when you were in the um, reserves. Army. In the Army. Army. Duty. And, um, you know, we're, and we're grateful because we see your fruit. We see what you're what you're doing. And and actually, you've got a new song that we just played. Tell us a little bit about that really quickly, if you can. Well, thank you so much. It's the title of the song. It's the second lead out single off the uh, Outpour Experience album that we released May of 2020. And hey, millions didn't make it, but I was one of the ones who did. Come so on now. When I got on the other side of you know dealing with the whole COVID and being home, uh, that's just four words I had, and they were thank you so mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. I made it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A lot of people didn't. And we, 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 our heart goes out to them. But being one that did make it, uh, I wanted to use my life mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, as a testament to let people know that, hey, you can survive and thrive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so thank you so much. Is that is exactly that. That's so good. We've got really have so much more to talk about today. <laughs> um, I want to get with the guest that you brought in studio oh, with yes. us today. Um, because you guys have an event coming up called the March Gladys event. Yes. Uh, Ernest Pugh, would you please introduce our guest that we have in studio? Absolutely. Uh, this gentleman that I'm bringing to the stage right now is a great friend of mine. He is a cons consistent source of strength, encouragement, uh, and friendship to me. He hails from Tampa, Florida, okay. where he had uh, a triumph deliverance church there. But now he has, uh, God has moved him to the Houston mm -hmm. arena now, where he will soon launch uh, the triumph uh, Houston church. And so leading up to that launch, we are doing what's called a revival called March Gladness. He'll talk to you more about it. And it's every Thursday in March. It's 
7 o'clock. He's going to talk to you about where we're doing it. And he's bringing the word. But we brought artists such as Akati Cortez, Gene Moore, um, Charisma Evans is coming tonight. Chanel, tomorrow, Chanel Dixon will be there. We've had Zay Lamb as well as um, uh, Compassion who have come to set the atmosphere. And then he preaches us like a crazy man every week. So <laughs> he'll tell you more about it. But everybody, Elvis J. Piggott. Hey, how are you How are you, you all? Today? How are you? Wonderful. So grateful to be here with you, mm -hmm. Amanda Sam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On the great 102.5. On the new good, new good station. <laughs> so I'm grateful and honored to be here. We were saying earlier, you're 12, so I don't know how you're <laughs> uh, You look so young. You look like a I've kid. I've been pastoring for 15 years. Mm -hmm. 15 years, and so I'm so grateful for that. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful to be in Houston. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we come in from Tampa, Florida, as he mentioned, and uh, our church, Triumph and Deliverance Cathedral in Tampa, um, has been a blessing, a great success. Uh, but the pandemic happened, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so we was forced to close doors, and in the process of that, we understood um, so many people had been prophesying and speaking life that, you know, God was moving you out of the area, God was moving you to the region, and you got to go and do this and do that. And I sat there one day at home, and I said to myself, I said, well, here come the pandemic, the doors of the church is closed, because we often get comfortable when everything is going well. Mm -hmm. And so I couldn't understand when people say, God is moving you somewhere else. I'm like, I'm not moving nowhere. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm I'm good. Mm -hmm. I've, you know, I've been established um, in the political arena as well as in the uh, uh, church world. Mm -hmm. And I was just sad. Uh, but the pandemic happened. Our doors closed. And the Lord uh, could would not allow me to rest mm -hmm. until I obeyed him. And so I got <laughs> some of my staff together and I told him, I said, well, the Lord is pushing me to Houston and we have a work to do. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, Pastor, if you go, we'll support you. Mm -hmm. And so we have uh, made that move. Uh, the Triumph Church Houston is on the go. So good. Uh, and I'm so excited about That's what's really getting good. ready to happen. That's so good. Buccaneers fan? Oh, Buccaneers fan. Oh, Super Bowl. Oh, Super Bowl. I knew it. I knew it. Okay. I knew it. Fortunate to be at the Super Bowl. <laughs> Super Bowl. Tampa, Florida. We and, had and, and, hosted and won it. And I'm glad. <laughs> and I'm guessing you're a Lightning fan, too, because y'all won the Stanley Cup, too. Look, hosted and won it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and a, and a Rays fan. The Rays probably. came back. Yeah, we, we we love the Bay Area, man. I mean, there's so much going on there. And I often say, you know, moving to Houston was solely uh, to obey God and to follow His instruction because I love the Tampa Bay area. Mm -hmm. I got a question for you. As a pastor, going through the pandemic, right? Even before then, and like I said, you do look young. How who's ministering over you? Who do you go to for protection, for counsel, for or do you at all? Do pastors need to seek counsel? Pastors do, and I'm so fortunate. Uh, the late, uh, unfortunately, you know. Um, the late Bishop Matthew Williams, my leader, uh, the general board member of the Church of God in Christ, he's passed now, um, November 27th of 2020. Uh, went home to be with the Lord, but he's been my spiritual father, been my bishop, my leader, all of my life. Mm -hmm. I'm very and, sorry uh, for your loss. You know, and I, I, I stayed under my leader, and uh, we, we always, you, I think every pastor uh, have to have somebody, mm -hmm. don't you know, that you want to uh, speak to and that will speak life into you mm -hmm. when you spoke, spoke life into so many others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a necessary need, and I'm fortunate to have that. So I know that a lot of pastors were... Um, when it came to the pandemic, and I only mention this because we're still kind of going through it, mm -hmm. but um, they weren't able to go to a, a, another city and build a church. So what steps did you take to get your mind prepared to even be able to do something like that as big as that or, and, or even settle with the fact that, okay, my church just shut down. Mm -hmm. So how did you even cope with that? What were the mechanisms that you used? Um, honestly, I, I stood on the very principle which I preached. Uh, God does everything well. Mm -hmm. I stood on that. I could not understand it from the fleshly uh, perspective, but understood spiritually God has orchestrated a plan. And I, I, I really, why it bothered me, why I was I was going crazy, like we can't have service. I have not missed church in all my life. You know, and I'm like, look, this, this, I, I don't know what's going to happen, but listen, I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to take this chance, you know. Uh, but, but honestly, it took, uh, it, it really opened my eyes mm -hmm. to something. What it opened my eyes to do is understand and also teach those that was with me mm -hmm. that our devotion has to be outside of the four walls of the church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we get so caught up in just being in church mm -hmm. that we really don't really know how strong our relationship with God is mm -hmm. outside of 
what's happening in church. Mm -hmm. And so this was the test of faith of the saints everywhere that you now got to stand on God when the music ain't playing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You now got to stand on what you've been taught and the words which you have heard when the doors have closed. And we stood on that. Did, I mean, the state, did the state shut y'all down or did you shut down on your own? Because well, I know Florida was wide open. Yeah, we, we, we shut down on our own because we understood that it was not about uh, the jumping and shouting or just coming to church. We wanted to make sure people was protected. Good, and we good. understood that this was a pandemic that was serious and mm -hmm. we needed not to take it lightly. Gotcha. So we closed down until things got better. Mm -hmm. Ernest Pugh mentioned all of the different technology that he's used to advance himself and YouTube and all these different things. In some cases, in a lot of cases, uh, pastors may not have been able to, you know, switch mind uh, gears to be able to move forward and ga uh, garner all of this following. So what would advice would you give to pastors who are struggling with trying to, you know, learn different technology to advance their church? Lord, pull on your staff. I'm mm. listening. If you don't got none, you got to get some. You know? <laughs> it's almost you, you take that musician salary and go get some tech salary. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, because we had to. I, I mean, I still haven't adjusted and coped with gotcha. it. To be Thank honest, you for saying that. Um, mm -hmm. I still haven't. Um, I'm so fortunate for the staff that stands by me and forces me to say, Pastor, you got to do virtual service now. <laughs> virtual <laughs> service. I'm listening. <laughs> Y'all just replay something. <laughs> and uh, it's it's a challenge. It's mm -hmm. tough. Uh, because you, you're used to just being in the zone, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, it's tough. So um, at, right now, we still, we're still we still working with and I would say to any pastor, you know, just keep trusting God and lean on your staff and realize that service is not, service don't stop when service stop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When our good. service stop, our service should not stop. Mm -hmm. Guys, we got Ernest Pugh and Elvis Piggott in the building. They've got an event coming up called uh, March Gladness Event. Now, I hadn't been to a revival in a long time, and the first thing that comes to my mind is people rolling on the ground because I was raised in <laughs> <laughs> So uh, the only thing that comes to my mind is a crowd of folk all standing outside, and again, catching the Holy Ghost, uh -huh. getting spirit filled, uh -huh. and all these different things. Uh -huh. So, what should people expect with this particular event, with Triumph, um, with uh, your March Gladness event uh, by Triumph Church of Houston? And want to most definitely celebrate and put that emphasis on uh, Dr. Ernest Pugh for helping and assistance. Uh, I can surely tell you that we don't have to worry about that. Uh, he has uh, put the guidelines in place: social distancing, wearing masks, and making sure that we are uh, doing it very safely. Mm -hmm. We should expect great singing, great worship mm -hmm. uh, that would take place, and a great word from the Lord. Uh, he has skilled it with the time. You ain't going to be there all night. Mm -hmm. Now, old school revivals, 11, 12, before you get out. You will get out promptly on time. No later than 8.57. Look at it. So, I'm so grateful he's put everything in place and made sure that we can be able to do this safely mm -hmm. and, and protect people at the same time of giving God what's due. I would be remiss if I didn't mention this topic. Recently, Kirk Frank was um oh yes <laughs> yes <laughs> first of all let me give y'all my opinion and then no no was it kurt franklin or was it or was it plot it was kurt franklin okay all right so his son <laughs> recorded him their conversation <laughs> First of all, he dead wrong for that. The son is dead wrong. Dead wrong. I don't dead find wrong. Kirk Franklin wrong in any nope. way for his response. And the son was wrong, and parenting too. is very difficult. Parenting is difficult, but... And complicated. And the thing is, I probably have said words to my kids. Sure. Mm -hmm. But it was done in a private setting, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, in which that is a very private situation. Yeah. So when you go public and you're judged in the public of the opinion with people who are not credentialed to deal with mental health or just dysfunction of a family, I don't think we qualify. So I pray for everybody It's adversity affected but at the same time parenting is not easy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and every situation and every child is different mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. all I'll say do you think Kirk Franklin should have apologized he already did no, but do you think I, he he needed to absolutely not I mean I think because of who he is in the in the in the body of Christ as a Christian leader mm -hmm. I think uh, it was a very good idea to come and to just say what I said in the heat of the moment was not what a Christian person should do. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. uh, that's the <laughs> method, but I think the motive behind it was to reprimand and bring some order to this mm -hmm. young man. This has gone on for three decades. Mm -hmm. I've known Kirk since I was 19 years old, mm -hmm. and I've known Kirion since he was born. So mm -hmm. I've watched a lot of things play out, and how he handled that, mm -hmm. he did a much better job than I did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I probably, my, my son would probably been in a body bag. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, take that back, take that back. Mm -hmm. And right. a straight jacket. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> right. Pastor Pickett, really quickly for you, is it okay for uh, Christians to curse? 
<laughs> I just want to know from you. I would say that we all have an issue. <laughs> <laughs> and we all have to work out our own soul salvation <laughs> with fear and trembling. I believe that I'm trying to make heaven every day. <laughs> you did not answer that question. I mean at all. <laughs> I'll take it though. I'll take it. Hey guys, look, we have Ernest Pugh and Pastor Elvis Piggott in the building. They've got an event coming up called March Gladness. Um, it's a revival. It starts when, Pastor Piggott? It starts, oh, well, it already started. It already we started. have one more, so we have two more services tomorrow night. Where? It's going to be, come on. 11755 West Little York Road <laughs> in Cyprus. Okay, very good. Harvest. Very it's good. actually Harvest. Uh, Harvest, Breakthrough Harvest Church, mm -hmm. Pastor uh, Troy there allowed us to come in. So we're excited. That's so good. Oh, yes. That's so good. We are excited about having you guys here. And thank you for joining us here today. Um, is there anything you want to, well, actually, we've come down to the end of the show. Uh, and we'd like to leave fans, followers, listeners, and supporters with something inspiring, something empowering, something they can take with them the rest of the day, the rest of the week, all the way up to the weekend. Wink, what you got? It's happy Stimmy Day. And also, I'm happy because we just signed our left tackle tool six years, $138 million a year. <laughs> <laughs> At Wink Westwood, all social media platforms. Uh, Pastor Piggott, what you got for us? I'm a Houston Texan now. Mm -hmm. I, I believe nope. with everything, uh, character will get you there. Mm -hmm. Gift will get you there, but it takes character to keep you there. Very good, very good. Um, Mr., I need your glory. <laughs> I, I will just say that, listen, your anticipation what open the door for the manifestation of what you're expecting in this season and I don't care what kind of what you're facing if you have expectancy mm -hmm. I believe that it meets you there your faith will get you what you need and the I next last thing I want to say is I uh, follow the triumph church on Instagram at at triumph Facebook on at triumph church of Houston and email address is info at tribe Houston <laughs> you did so good today <laughs> <laughs> you, that's huge coming from you <laughs> I need a project though okay I got you. I got you. <laughs> A song. I need to be saying something. Something. You I need do. to be on the next album. Start hey, at church tomorrow night. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You hey go. guys, look, we are so grateful that you all have joined us today. We hope that you enjoyed this interview. We certainly did. Um, I'm going to leave you all with the same thing I always leave you with. Be the change you want to see. Be the song mm. you uh, man wants to be on. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> if not you who have not now win, this is the Amanda Set Morning Show on the new amazing 102.5 FM. On the next show coming up is Odalay Houston. Y'all keep it locked right here. We're your Do Good Through Good Station. We're out.